Balloons come from the sap of the rubber tree. This white milky substance known as latex is transformed through chemical processes into an elastic and resistant rubber capable of expanding up to five times its size without bursting. But how is latex extracted from the rubber tree and how are balloons made? It all begins in the hot and humid regions of southern Mexico, where vast rubber tree plantations grow. Under the shade of these green canopies, experienced workers carefully extract the latex with millimetric precision. They use sharp blades to make fine incisions in the tree's bark, just enough to stimulate sap flow without harming the tree's health. The liquid begins to slowly drip and is collected in small bowls placed at the base of the trunk. This process requires not only skill, but also patience. If the cut is too deep or at the wrong angle, it can damage the tree and reduce its future production. That's why each incision is made with respect for the tree, following techniques perfected over generations. The extracted latex has a milky texture and is a watery emulsion made primarily of water, natural rubber, and small amounts of proteins, sugars, and resins. Once extracted, the latex remains very sensitive. To prevent premature coagulation, it must be quickly transported to processing plants. That's where a new stage begins, purification. The liquid goes through filters that remove bits of bark, leaves, insects, and any other impurities that could affect the quality of the final product. Then, preservatives like ammonia are added to stabilize the mixture and keep it in liquid form during transport to the factories. Many of these industrial plants are located in the central part of the country, in areas like the state of Mexico, where balloon production is a large-scale art Inside the plant, the latex's journey is just beginning. This white liquid, still warm from the field, flows into enormous stainless steel tanks, bright and deep. Inside, a surprising transformation takes place. Latex becomes the perfect base to create strong, vibrant, and elastic balloons. First, thick liquid pigments of intense colors are added, ranging from crimson red to electric blue. The color, when it contacts the white mixture, spreads like ink on wet paper. To ensure there are no clumps or solid residues, everything passes through a fine gauze that acts as a filter and guarantees a smooth and uniform texture. But color isn't everything. For the latex to stretch without breaking, several key additives are incorporated. Sulfur is essential for vulcanization, the process that transforms liquid latex into solid, flexible rubber. Zinc oxide speeds up this reaction and improves the final strength of the material. Antioxidants are added to extend the balloon's shelf life and thickeners to control the viscosity of the mix. This chemical cocktail is kept in constant motion thanks to powerful agitators installed at the bottom of the tank. These paddles spin continuously for over 15 hours, ensuring each component is evenly distributed. During agitation, the mixture is kept at a controlled temperature. That heat not only keeps the latex active, but also begins to trigger the necessary reactions to turn it into rubber. This is where the ingredients activate. Molecules begin to link together, forming an invisible network that will give the balloon incredible strength. While the latex patiently mixes in the tanks, in another part of the factory, a mechanical spectacle unfolds, precise and fascinating. Hundreds of metal molds, all in the exact shape of a balloon, move steadily along conveyor belts like soldiers marching in formation. These cold, shiny molds are ready for action. But before even touching a drop of latex, the molds must be spotless. A speck of dust, a microscopic lint, or even a fingerprint could ruin the balloon. That's why the first step is a cleansing bath. The molds are submerged in a mild citric acid solution that thoroughly cleans them, removing impurities and residue invisible to the naked eye. From this bath, they emerge fully disinfected and ready for their new skin. Next, a robotic arm, like part of an industrial choreography, rotates and carefully dips them into a tank of coagulant, a liquid mixture rich in calcium nitrate. This component plays a crucial role it prepares the surface of the mold, so the latex adheres like a second skin. Once coated with coagulant, the molds go through a drying oven. The heat evaporates the water in the mixture, 
leaving only a thin, uniform layer of calcium nitrate on the mold. This layer is key to ensuring proper latex adhesion. Now comes one of the most mesmerizing moments of the process, forming the balloon's skin. From below, a tank full of blue latex slowly rises to fully submerge the molds. It's a brief but critical instant. The duration of the bath and the density of the latex determine how thick or thin the final balloon will be. As the molds emerge, they gently drain the excess latex. And since latex starts drying almost instantly, within minutes, you can see a translucent layer, still soft, but already shaped. Then, the molds pass through a heating oven where they remain for about five minutes. There, the heat not only fully dries the latex layer, but also strengthens its structure. What was once a fragile film now becomes a firm, elastic membrane. The balloon's skin is now formed. After this step, the molds move to a brushing station. Spiral-shaped rotating brushes, like tiny whirlwinds of bristles, gently roll the bottom part of the balloon. This forms the nozzle, that small flap where air or gas is blown in. Without this detail, the balloon couldn't be inflated or sealed. To finish this stage, the molds rotate once more, and the freshly formed balloons are submerged in a bath of hot water. This rinse removes any surface residue and prepares the balloons to be separated from the mold. It not only eliminates microscopic impurities, but also neutralizes a latex protein that can cause allergies. But that's not all. The water's heat acts as a silent catalyst. This is where the magic of vulcanization happens a chemical process that transforms the balloon's soft skin into firm, elastic, and resistant rubber. Sulfur and zinc oxide, two key ingredients in the mixture, activate with the temperature and strengthen molecular bonds. Thanks to these invisible connections, latex gains the ability to stretch without breaking, expanding up to five times its original size without losing shape or giving in to pressure. The result is a balloon capable of withstanding time, burning sun, and even the brush of the wind. Once this stage is complete, the balloons move to the next section. There, an automated device briefly dips them into a mixture of talc and water. This slippery layer plays a key role, making the most awaited moment easier, demolding. Still attached to the molds, the balloons align under a system that injects gas with millimetric precision. The balloon begins to inflate gently, detaching from the metal surface, Instantly, mechanical rollers catch the balloons, remove them swiftly, and toss them upward. After a brief flight, they land on a conveyor belt. But before these balloons are party ready, they must undergo deep cleaning. They enter an industrial washing machine where pressure nozzles spray them with a special solution as they bounce around inside the metal drum. The water reaches 71 degrees Celsius, just right to remove any chemical residue and complete vulcanization leaving the rubber with its final texture. Flexible, resistant, and shiny. And now comes the moment of truth. A selected group of balloons is set aside to face quality control. They are inflated automatically, one by one, while sensors check their symmetry, color, thickness, and strength. If they show bubbles, irregularities, or ceiling flaws, they are discarded. The rest, the ones that pass the test, continue their journey. Some of these balloons move on to a special section, the printing area. Suction cups hold them as they rotate gently. Automatic stampers apply designs, texts, or illustrations on every balloon. Then, small brushes coat them with a thin layer of transparent rubber that locks in the ink without affecting flexibility. After that, they pass through a heat tunnel that dries everything in seconds. A final layer of silicone solution diluted in water gives them a shiny, silky finish. It also prevents them from sticking to each other once packed in bags. Now, these small latex balloons are ready to stretch and soar at a birthday party or any other celebration. If you want to know how Kinder Surprise eggs are made, you'll find the link in the description and the first comment. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning. Best regards.